Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, the Federal Trade Commission files an antitrust lawsuit against Amazon. Up next, why it's accusing Amazon of monopolizing the most lucrative parts of the internet. Taking a look outside with live cam, it's just right there in the middle. It's not cool, it's not too hot, it's, it's almost just right. The moon is out, it is a beautiful night out there at about 78 degrees. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is September 27th. Happy Wednesday. We made it to Wednesday and uh, still looking forward to a change. I'm um, knowing that it's becoming the end of September. We want something new for October. Yeah, the afternoons are still plenty hot around here. Just ask anybody that has to work or play outside in the afternoons. And Justin is in for Mike. A change? What's that? We don't know. I, I wish I could tell you that, that we are going to get a wholesale change here soon. Still not in the forecast. I'm just going to be honest with you right off the top. But uh, we will see some rain chances today. So there's that. Uh, we're going to keep it positive here. And as I, I, we look at the weather headlines, this is the time lapse from yesterday. We did have some storms off in the distance. And then as we went into the overnight uh, hours, most of that fell apart. And now we're just left with some mostly clear skies. So here are the headlines. A few storms today. We could see some pop up isolated downpours. 111 days. This is a crazy, crazy record. We're going to show it to you how many days we've been above 90. Uh, then the weekend rain looks unlikely. There's some very, very small chances. The weekend looks OK. It's just going to be uh, a little bit warm. We'll take a look at that forecast for you right now. 79 dew point is at 71 south southwesterly winds at about seven. It's fairly warm, fairly humid, and it will stay humid for most of today. Here's a look at our forecast. I mentioned those rain chances. They probably kick in at about two o'clock or so. And then beyond that, uh, it's just a 20% chance. A little better than yesterday, though, so there's that. And temperatures will be up around uh, 95, 96 for our high, as we said. So uh, we'll talk more about that forecast. We'll look a little closer to the computer models with the rain today. And again, the weekend forecast is coming up as well here in just a few minutes. Guys? Thank you, Justin. Close to 300 workers in Bear County will soon be without a job. That's according to the Texas Workforce Commission. And the report from TWC shows more than half of the 279 layoffs are at the food service vendor, Aramark. 144 Aramark employees are being laid off at the two Christus Health locations, and it's largely because the contract between Christus and Aramark expired. Now, according to a statement from Christus Health, the employees will be allowed to work for their new food vendor. The contract between Christus and Aramark is set to expire on October 31st. You can read that full statement from Christus Health right now on our website at kset.com. Now to the case against Amazon, is the trillion dollar online shopping behemoth a monopoly? Well, the government says yes. And now as ABC's Andrew Dimbert reports, Amazon is fighting back. This morning, a groundbreaking lawsuit. The Federal Trade Commission and 17 states are suing Amazon, claiming the online retail giant has created a monopoly. They're claiming that Amazon punishes vendors if they offer their products for a lower price on a competing website. They also are forcing or allegedly forcing these vendors to use their logistics, their warehousing, their shipping. The suit claims Amazon deters rivals and punishes sellers from lowering prices on other sites by making them invisible in search results. The $1.3 trillion company is accused of prioritizing search results for its own products and coercing sellers to use Amazon's fulfillment service. Nicholas Parks is the president of snobfoods.com and has been selling on Amazon for 21 years. We have to more than double our prices um, in order to compensate for all the fees, in order to break even, basically. It's created a, a very difficult retail market for anybody in the retail business. Amazon firing back, defending its practices and saying if the FTC gets its way, the result would be fewer products to choose from, higher prices, slower deliveries for consumers and reduced options for small businesses. The lawsuit filed by the FTC is wrong on the facts and the law. The suit had long been expected, with the head of the FTC vowing to rein in tech companies, but the legal strategy is far from a sure bet. Linda Kahn, who's bringing this suit, has a long time history of being a critic uh, of Amazon. Her anti-competitive views don't always sit well with the courts. A couple of cases she brought, namely against Microsoft and Facebook's parent company, Meta, uh, were thrown out. Don't look for any quick resolution to this lawsuit. The case could drag on in court for years. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. This morning, after 148 days of striking on the streets, leaders of the Writers Guild of America unanimously voted in favor of their members getting back to work. 
The tentative contract with the major studios includes pay hikes, stronger benefits, protections against the studio's use of artificial intelligence, and guarantees for streaming compensation. But there still may be another chapter or plot twist in this drama. The WGA tentative agreement is, by definition, not yet set in stone. And the Screen Actors Guild is still on the picket line. In Iraq, a fire that tore through a hall hosting a Christian wedding has killed at least 100 people and injured 150 others. This morning, authorities there warned that the death toll could rise. That fire happened about 200 miles northwest of Baghdad. Now, video footage shows fireworks catching a chandelier on fire. And a guest that spoke with an Iraqi TV channel says that the bride and groom are safe but devastated. Iraq's prime minister has ordered a full mobilization to aid the victims. Migrants continue to pour across the U.S.-Mexico border. Late last night, a large group of Venezuelan migrants were seen on video making their way across the Rio Grande and into Eagle Pass, where they awaited processing. Here in San Antonio, the city continues to shelter migrants coming to town. Its online dashboard shows more than 1,000 migrants have been sheltered daily since Friday. Right now, 436, 78 degrees. Mostly everybody hates doing laundry, but you don't have to be agitated by stubborn stains. Up next, how you can help your clothing and your washing machine last longer. Steven says we've had some overnight construction in two or three spots, but uh, should be a major ordeal right now. Looking at the highways, it look really good. Not very light traffic across the Alamo City right now. That shot is at 410 and Crossroads. And let's look out there with a live cam. Yeah, mid 70s, a little humid out there, but yeah, we hope that there's a tiny chance of rain for someone out there today. We're gonna be checking with Justin to see what we can expect for the rest of the week coming up. 439, when it comes to doing the laundry, you see all kinds of things online that make you think there's a better way to do your laundry. Some of these fixes can damage your clothing or your appliances. So 12 on your sides, Marilyn Morris went to a laundry expert for some good advice. Think you do a lot of laundry? Rich Handel is Consumer Reports laundry guru. I'm the person that does the laundry at home. My general advice, always check your washer's manual and look at the care labels on your clothes. And despite what you see on social media, never use anything other than laundry detergent in the washing machine. Not vinegar, liquid soap, or dish detergent. Vinegar can damage some rubber seals and hoses, and dish soap? Just don't. And you'll just end up with a huge sudsy mess in your machine. Instead, Handel says always add the correct amount of detergent, about three tablespoons. Most people use too much and that leaves a residue. And it's basic, but separate lights from darks and don't wash heavy fabrics with light weight. Jeans can beat up your delicates and always pre-treat stains. Check it when it comes out of the wash. Make sure you removed all of the stain because if you put it in the dryer, it will set that stain, making it very difficult to remove. Here's a money saving tip. Use your laundry detergent to pre-treat the stain and skip the fabric softener. It can leave a layer of residue on your clothes and your bath towels won't absorb as well. And Handel says instead of harsh bleach for whites, consider an oxidizing detergent instead. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. In Maryland, we trust. Yes. 441, 78 degrees. From custom paint jobs to bouncing hydraulics, up next, how these unique cars in San Antonio tell a story of their own. It's been just 11 days since LA County Sheriff's Deputy and a uh, Bear County uh, Sheriff's Deputy, sorry, let me start over completely. Very serious story. It's been just 11 days since an LA County Sheriff's Deputy was killed after leaving a sheriff's station. Up next, what surveillance video shows so far and what his family is saying about the investigation. And welcome back. It's 444. The family of an L.A. County Sheriff's deputy who was killed while in his patrol car is speaking exclusively to ABC News. ABC's Kena Whitworth has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. What is justice to you? That's been a tough question. It's been just 11 days since L.A. County Sheriff's deputy Ryan Klinkenbrumer was killed. Investigators say this surveillance video shows the assailant's dark gray car approaching Klinkenbrumer's SUV, then pulling alongside where they say he fatally shot the 30-year-old and then sped away. And now this morning, his mother and fiance are speaking out to Good Morning America. I remember that day too, like he kissed me goodbye, told me he loved me. I was like, well, I'll see you later. And just never came home. 
And we'll have much more of our exclusive interview coming up at 7 a.m. and how they want the world to remember the man they said was so proud to wear his badge. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kana Whitworth, ABC News, Los Angeles. Here at home, it's Hispanic Heritage Month and San Antonio International Airport has a new display to celebrate our city's enthusiasm for cars. RJ Marcus and photojournalist Adam Barraza took a low ride to the airport to share the history and meaning behind these cars. From custom paint jobs to bouncing hydraulics, each one of these lowriders tells its own story. Man, a lot goes into a lowrider. A lowrider is an extension of the person. You know, most of these cars are dedicated to somebody, you know, from their fa from their family, from their past. We got the chance to ride with some of these car owners from Callahan to Culebra on their way to the airport. It's beauty, it's mesmerizing, it's, it's watching a kid seeing a lowrider for the first time going, what, wow. As they cruise down the streets, all eyes are on these custom works of art. These cars are meant to be seen. They're not meant to be kept in the garage. Joe De La Rosa owns a 59 Chevy Impala. He says that there's not much that compares to driving his lowrider. If it's once a month, maybe twice a month, um, it, it's, it's like a, a place that you've been waiting to be at. Riding is a way of life for these owners. Stacy Stewart was born into the San Antonio car culture. His dad founded one of the iconic lowrider clubs in San Antonio, First Impressions. I said he would take his cars to the next level of building it. When you have a lowrider, you get to create your own dream of a car, like you, you, your own color, your own interior all of the specialties you want to do to a car. Stacy installed thousands of dollars worth of hydraulics in this car, and it definitely makes an impression. Spins, there's a gear in here with fluid. It spins and it shoots the fluid up to the front, and that's what makes the car go up and down. You're cruising downtown, you get tourists that, that like what they see. Um, like I said, I put it on, hit the hydraulics, hop it. It's just something different, you know? Lowriders can be traced back to the 1940s and 50s. They became popular as many Mexican Americans or Chicanos on the West Coast, the Southwest, and Texas wanted to express more of their culture. It's a time, timeless effort, but it's definitely worth it. Um, the pride that goes into it is something that's unmatched. These cars are now on display at the airport for Hispanic Heritage Month, generations of stories and history on four wheels. My hope is that I can inspire others to be able to join what I would call the culture, the, the sport, uh, the love of, of low riding. So like we're finally getting uh, a platform to where we can highlight the beauty of our culture. RJ Marquez, Case at 12 News. Quick check of the roads with Transguide. We have some problems. This is I-35 South. The picture there, it's at I-35 at Somerset Road. A couple of lanes are blocked. Stephen just alerted us to this incident, and he's going to keep an eye on it as he prepares to join us here in the studio in just about 12 minutes. Yeah, when things probably start getting a little busier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, it seemed humid out there. It's a little humid. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're having a rough time losing humidity, too. I mean, amongst other things that we're dealing with this summer, it's, uh, it's also been humid on top of this heat. It got up to 96 yesterday, so we're still making our way well into the 90s, and today will be that way again. Beautiful shot here. You can see the moon in the distance. Uh, temperatures right now, 79 degrees here in San Antonio. Feels like 82, so that's that humidity Steph was talking about. New Braunfels, 74. Uh, feels like 74 there. Seguin, 73. Bernie, 70. Kerrville has dropped into the 60s. I suspect we'll see the temperatures drop a couple more degrees before it's all said and done, and then we'll start the process of warming back up. So uh, will we see any relief in the way of rain today? Yesterday we had a couple of showers. I think today is a little more widespread, not widespread, but uh, maybe a little more coverage uh, is what I should say as far as rain goes. And here's why. We look at the water vapor, which shows us the amount of moisture in the atmosphere. It also shows us where we have some little disturbances that uh, can move across the atmosphere. And we can see out in West Texas a little bit more moisture and we're going to get a little area of low pressure. It's going to try to develop that swings through today. So that's why I think at least we have a shot at some downpours by the afternoon. Nothing out there right now. We don't have any showers associated with this just yet. A few showers in Mexico, but nothing that uh, jumps off the page. But once we get some daytime heating, that helps to destabilize the atmosphere and you can get some of these pop up downpours. So let's fast forward to two o'clock. This is when I think we start to see some of these clouds building up. 
and then maybe some showers. Uh, now, don't pay too close attention to exactly where this model is putting the rain because <clears throat> it could be anywhere. It's one of those situations. It's just a matter of where it pops up. It's like a boiling pot of water. You don't know where that first bubble is going to pop up, uh, but we know the chance is there. Four o'clock. That's probably when we see a, the most activity on radar. And then as we head into the evening, everything starts to quiet down. And by eight o'clock, we're probably seeing most of this go away. Although it still shows a few showers by nine or 10 o'clock. So our rain chances today, we'll call it 20% between two and eight o'clock uh, is when you can expect that. Temperatures will be up around 96, 95 in Hondo, 96 in Carrizo Springs, 95 in Canyon Lake. No 100 degree temperatures here, but with the humidity, it can feel awful close. Here's the big picture as we look at the jet stream and we have that one little disturbance move through today and look what wants to come revisit again. Our range of high pressure starts to move in. The setup here, we got a big trough out west and then we start to see a trough develop in the east. We sometimes call this an omega block where everything kind of just gets stuck and you can't get it dislodged. So we'll have a big low out west, but we'll be under the influence of a ridge and that pretty much keeps us dry as we head into the weekend. So our rainfall, other than today, our rainfall potential through Monday, notice there's just not much there. West Texas will see some. I think the Pacific Northwest will see quite a bit of rain. And you go east to places like Florida, they'll see some rain, but just not here in South Texas. Uh, so our extended forecast, 95 tomorrow, 95 Friday, 94 Saturday, Sunday. This is the picture of consistency. Uh, mid 90s next week too. The morning lows get a little bit better, so the humidity, I think, tries to drop off some late in the weekend. Uh, but until then, still pretty humid in the mornings. Yes, it is. Uh, October 1st is Sunday. Yes. <laughs> something, something is going to happen in October. I can feel it. I think uh, so. There's no scientific method to that. That's just pure it's October and something should happen. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Feel, I'm feeling pretty optimistic about yeah. it. I like that. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to have something. So yeah. sure. Yeah. 452, 78 degrees. Up next, global superstar Shakita is once again hit with tax evasion charges. How much she owes and when the case is going to trial. Your lottery numbers pick three, 893, Fireball 4, Daily 4, 6272, Fireball 6. Cash 5, 5, 10, 21, 31, 35. And Mega Millions, 15, 30, 35, 42, 60, Mega Ball 16, Mega Plier 4. Good luck. It's a good day for writers over in Hollywood. Plus, Shakira is once again hit with tax evasion charges. For the latest what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Hope is in the air on the picket lines in Hollywood on news of a deal between writers and studios. Oh, I was just thrilled. Actor and writer Bob Odenkirk on Tuesday, the first day back to picketing since word of a deal, though there are still a lot of questions about the deal details. It sounds like we made inroads in every way that we needed to. Now attention turns to the actors, but no word yet when they'll be back at the negotiating table. Sorry, baby, I said rato. Global superstar Shakira once again hit with tax evasion charges in Spain. Prosecutors saying she owes more than $7.1 million in taxes on income from 2018. This follows a separate case in which she's accused of owing more than $15 million. That's set to go to trial in November. Don't get angry with me. A posthumous Rolling Stones tour after the band is no longer with us? It's possible. Frontman Mick Jagger seemed open to the idea when asked about it by Wall Street Journal magazine. He also said he doesn't see the group selling off its song catalog like so many are doing. The Stones' new album is out October 20th. And pop punk singer Avril Lavigne with a birthday today, she's 39. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. Time now is 456 and 78 degrees for now. A judge has ruled that Donald Trump committed fraud for years while building the real estate empire that catapulted him to fame and the White House. Up next, why the former president is calling the decision un-American. And local investigators are looking into whether there are more victims in the aggravated sexual assault case against a local Roman Catholic priest. Up next, how the Bear County Sheriff says he groomed one of those victims. And Stephen is tracking this accident southbound 35 near Somerset Road. We'll talk to him coming up after this break. Live from KSAT 12, 
Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A Catholic priest in San Antonio is arrested, accused of sexually assaulting a church member. Up next, how the San Antonio Archdiocese is responding this morning. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. A judge ruling against former President Donald Trump in a financial fraud case. How he could pay $250 million and how his attorneys say they intend to immediately appeal the judge's decision. The latest coming up. And trending right now on KSAT.com this morning, the Bear County DA's office is recommending low bonds for a man accused of being ready for war with Universal City Police. Now online right now, you can find out why and more about the suspect who was found with loaded guns and 160 rounds of ammo after investigators said he threatened to kill a family member and have a shootout with officers. And right now outside with live cam, the moon is uh, just about to head down as we head into your Wednesday morning. We still need some rain around here. We'll see if we can make some lemonade with very few lemons. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, September 27th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a good week so far, and uh, we hope you're maybe one of the lucky ones who actually got a little bit of rain this week. I check radar every day this time of year, Justin, and I saw a few, very few and far between storms yesterday. Hopefully for a repeat today. Yeah, I think it will look pretty similar. The radar actually may be a little more active today. That's the good news. It's kind of like playing the lotto, right? You gotta, you gotta get lucky, be one of the winners, and hopefully the rain falls in your backyard today. There is a chance of that. A lot of it yesterday was south of San Antonio. Let me show you a picture down in Divine. That's a cool shot. You can see a little bit of rain there off in the distance. Nothing was very heavy yesterday, and I don't suspect we're going to see a lot of heavy rain today. It'll be those pop up afternoon downpours that don't last all that long. Current temperatures across the country, there is still nothing that is terribly cold. Uh, we're still waiting for that first big cold front to kind of draw down some really cold stuff. It's just not happening. Yeah, it's 44 in Cup Bank, but they're pretty used to that this time of year. Same story in the International Falls. In the rest of the country, pretty average, if not above average. The coldest temperature actually is up in Maine. Caribou, 40 this morning. Most of Texas, though, in the 70s. Uh, with the exception of Wichita Falls, Lubbock, and Amarillo, which is in the 60s right now. Some drier air up there. We're not feeling that. Our case at 12 hour forecast, mostly sunny this morning. Noontime, partly cloudy. You'll start to see the clouds billowing up by about the lunch hour. Then by the afternoon, we'll see that 20% chance of rain. Uh, temperatures make their way up to around 96 or so. It'll feel a little bit warmer than that. We'll have some. Uh, some humidity sticking around into the afternoon hours and we'll keep those rain chances going into the evening hours and hopefully we can get something like this a little bit later today here in San Antonio. All right, let's check in on your morning commute. Stevens joining us now. Good morning to you, sir. Hey, Justin, good morning. Uh, well, things aren't looking too great out here at 35 at Somerset. We've had our eyes on this for a little while now. A crash that was reported by TxDOT earlier in the morning. Southbound lanes. We know at least three lanes were blocked at one point, and you can see that traffic's moving through that area without any trouble, so it looks like they may have reopened some of those lanes. But flashing lights still remain on the scene, so we'll just make sure to watch out for first responders. Uh, it appears that we only have one of those emergency units out out there, but just again right there near Somerset. Be on the lookout. Earlier three lanes were blocked, but again, it does look like we have a little bit of progress at this hour. That's really the only major issue that we have seen on our roadways, and we of course did have that overnight construction that should be wrapping up. But the wide view of the map right behind me shows that you should have plenty of space out there if you plan on hitting the roads. If you're heading into the Alamo City, let's get a look at those travel times. Green from again along I-10 westbound with 28 minutes. Right now, if you are traveling in from Lavernia along 87 northbound, expect about a 33 minute commute and we have 28 minutes for our friends down in Floresville, but we want you to be aware of what's happening here at 35 southbound. I'll keep my eyes on it. No idea how many uh, vehicles may be involved in this crash, but we'll keep you updated and let you know of any progress throughout the morning. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. This morning, investigators are looking into whether there are more victims in the aggravated sexual assault case against a local Roman Catholic priest. Case that's John Paul Baraja spoke with parishioners at that most recent church. Sooner or later, whoever does bad, you know, they're going to they're gonna pay for it. There's heaven and there's hell. <laughs> you know, that's all I can say. There's a sense of disbelief and shock at St. Rose of Lima Catholic Church. The man parishioners know as Father Winjiri or George Mbunga Ndungu is accused of sexually assaulting a church member. Our parish members are going to find out, or they, as they're finding out, 
they're gonna have hurt feelings because that's what I'm feeling right now. According to the Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar, a church employee accused Amdungu of doing something, quote, improper with her in August. He was reassigned while the Archdiocese of San Antonio asked any potential victims to come forward. Earlier this month, a woman in her 70s accused a priest of sexually assaulting her on three separate occasions. He very much groomed this this victim, um, you know, gained her confidence. Obviously, you know, she's she's a very religious person, very involved in the church. And unfortunately, he just totally abused on, uh, abused that. According to the arrest affidavit, the woman says when she resisted Ndungu's advances, he said, quote, God is merciful. God is forgiving. All we have to do is go to confession and for now, just enjoy the moment. Also saying, God told them it was okay for them to do this, just not every day. Um, he saw an opportunity and like a predator will tend to do, he took full advantage of that, uh, weaseled his way into her home and then sexually assaulted her. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. In response, the Archdiocese of San Antonio issued a statement that says in part, the Archdiocese of San Antonio takes seriously any allegation of sexual misconduct. We encourage anyone who is a victim of sexual abuse to contact law enforcement. My microphone working? There it is. Okay. The city of San Antonio is stepping up its efforts to stop illegal dumping. Clearing out illegal dumping and homeless encampments, a big priority for solid waste management crews. The city spends $1.6 million to find an 11-member crew dedicated solely to clearing dump sites and encampments. Last year, they collected more than 2,400 tons of trash from 9,000 cleanups. This year, their goal is 11,000 cleanups, 3,000 tons of trash. This summer, an undercover operation with San Antonio police led to the arrest of three people suspected of illegal dumping. We're going to be doing a lot more of these this year, so if you're dumping, you get caught, you're going to have a bad day. Illegal dumping could cost you a fine of a few thousand dollars or jail time. Solid Waste Department is getting an extra $530,000 this year to deal with the issue. You're also going to be seeing more educational advertising. Tell the community where they can drop off bulky trash for free. A major ruling by a New York judge siding with Attorney General Letitia James against Donald Trump in a $250 million financial fraud case. Trump's team says they will file an immediate appeal. And as ABC's N1 reports, the ruling could end up costing him millions and limit his ability to do business in New York. We are filing a lawsuit against this morning, a big win for New York Attorney General Letitia James in her investigation into the Trump Organization. After a judge ruled the ex-president and his company committed fraud by overstating the value of their assets by as much as $2.2 billion more than the actual amount. The fraud was so overwhelming and conclusive, the judge decided there was no need to hear testimony at a trial set to start next month. The judge agreeing with James, saying Trump inflated the value of his Fifth Avenue apartment by as much as $200 million, claiming it was triple its actual size. The judge also striking Trump's claim that Mar-a-Lago was worth up to $600 million when it's assessed at no more than $27 million. The judge also saying the defendant lives in a fantasy world and that these fraudulent valuations were meant to reap the benefits of better loan and insurance terms. That Former Trump lawyer Michael Cohen reacting on CNN. And Judge uh, Ngoron really had enough. He had enough. I mean, some of the language that was used in this 35-page decision um, demonstrates exactly this point, that he just had enough of the games and he was not going to allow uh, Donald's delay tactics to continue. Overnight, the GOP presidential frontrunner attacked the decision as political, claiming his civil rights have been violated. Next, the judge will decide how much Trump will pay in penalties at trial starting October 2nd. The way to get to Donald Trump is always via the pocketbook. The attorney general asking for at least $250 million, saying we look forward to presenting the rest of our case. The judge's partial ruling limits Trump's ability to do business in New York and could force him to sell some of the buildings that bear his name. Trump's attorney telling ABC News they intend to immediately appeal the judge's decision. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Nine minutes past the hour, 78 degrees. The SEC announces plans to reintroduce rules protecting net neutrality. Up next, what the regulations mean for high-speed internet providers such as AT&T, Comcast, and Verizon. 
And Texas has been awarded the headquarters location for a federal scientific research agency. How San Antonio will play a role in the future of health care in the state. And looking out there with live cam, I'll take that 78 for now. Yesterday afternoon, I was picking up my little girl from school and I felt like I was walking to her school like it was in August. <laughs> Very hot out there still. We'll be right back. Now to a big win for the San Antonio and the city's bioscience and health industries. Texas has been awarded the headquarter location for a federal scientific research agency. The Advanced Research Project Agency for Health, or ARPA-H, is a group that has its sight set on medical innovation, specifically how patients across the country will be treated in the future. The headquarters will be physically located in Dallas, but San Antonio will also have a role. So KSAT asked Biomed SA President Heather Hansen why the announcement is big for the Alamo City. In San Antonio in particular, having this visibility will likely mean more projects coming here, more clinical trials coming here, to where our population will get access first to these cutting edge technologies. Now, Hansen went on to say that the announcement means jobs and money are coming to San Antonio. You can watch that entire interview with her at the UT Health SA Vice President of Research on KSET.com. Right now, 514, 78 degrees. Apple's Mac O Sonoma update is now available. Up next, how you'll get what you'll get during that update that includes some fancy new screensavers. Spotify has introduced a new social listening feature. We'll show you how Spotify Jam can enhance your music experience. Did you know 80% of women are struggling with hair damage? Dryness and frizz that keeps coming back could be damaged hair that can't retain moisture. You need Pantene's Miracle Rescue Deep Conditioner. It's filled with provitamins to help hair lock in moisture, visibly repairing six months of damage in just one use with no way down. Guaranteed or your money back for hair that looks healthy and stays healthy. If you know, you know it's Pantene. Why didn't we do this last year? Before you were preventing migraine, you could look that. And look at me now. You'll never truly forget migraine, but zero migraine days are possible. Don't take if allergic to Culipta. Most common side effects are nausea, constipation, and sleepiness. Culipta. I forget you get migraine medicine. NFL Plus. I catch live, local, and primetime games on my phone. And I catch every touchdown every Sunday afternoon on NFL Red Zone. Catch it all and start streaming NFL Plus today. Plans start at $6.99 a month. In today's Tech Fights, the proposed return of net neutrality rules. The FCC is aiming to restore Obama-era regulations for high-speed Internet. For providers like AT&T, Comcast, and Verizon, the rules would ban the companies from blocking or slowing down access to online content. The Internet providers are expected to fight the efforts. Next, Apple has released a new operating system for Mac computers. It includes new interactive desktop widgets and screensavers, along with video conferencing improvements and even a game mode. It can be downloaded for most Mac models after 20 2017. And Spotify has introduced a social listening feature. Spotify Jam allows groups to organize and listen to shared playlists. The feature works with up to 32 users. Now Spotify sounds a lot like my computer printer. I gotta pay per jam. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Like it? No, I liked it. I thought I, it was funny. I thought it was funny. funny. Paper jam. Well, yeah. traffic is his jam. Steven <laughs> is his name. Oh, well, yeah, unfortunately, it's not something that we're all going to be uh, jamming out to, but we do want to keep an eye here on this incident that we've been watching very closely along 35 southbound at Somerset. As we get a look at Transguide, you can see that we at least have one vehicle involved. It doesn't appear that this is a major crash, uh, at least according to Textide. You can see it's off in the grassy median there, and we do have a tow truck on the scene. So let's hope everyone gets by safely. But earlier we saw three uh, early reports said that there were at least three lanes blocked. Uh, what we saw last was that there was at least one lane that was getting by. But from this looks of it, but looks of it here, Things are moving uh, better at Long 35 southbound near Somerset. We'll get a look at our map, and there was a little bit of a buildup taking place. Nothing too serious, but let's hope everyone's doing okay out there. I haven't seen any paramedics, so that's good news. But as we give you a wide look at the map, you're not seeing anything else. It's just going to be a pretty quiet start as we get the commute rolling. Let's hope it stays that way, but just plan ahead later as we see some construction taking place at Curb and Sidewalk Construction right here along FM 1535 Northwest Military Highway. This We still have a few more days to go, September 29th, 7 in the morning 
morning to 6 in the evening. That's when we'll see those alternating lane closures in both directions from Loop 1604 to Hebner Road. And there's a lot more else happening. You could scan this QR code and it takes you directly to our case at traffic page. And you know the drill has a full list of all the closures that are happening right now in and around the Alamo City. Plan the commute ahead of time, Justin. And I'm sure those construction workers are ready for some cool weather, too, I would imagine. I'm going to throw a, a, a huge number at you here, and this is pretty wild. 111 consecutive days above 90 degrees. I think this really it tells the story of this summer. Uh, it has been since early June that we've been below 90 degrees uh, for a high temperature. Uh, this is easily in first place now. The, the next on the list is 108 set back in 2009, and then 98 set in 2019. And guess what? We're still adding to this, and we probably will for a long while, at least to the end of September. Likely goes down as the hottest September on record, too. So as we keep thinking this is going to come to an end, not yet. We're still going. We're still going with this heat. Uh, fall is off to a very, very slow start. I can tell you that. And today, we're well above 90. 96, the forecast high. 95 in Honda. 96 in Carrizo Springs. 96 in San Marcos. Uh, dew points, well, it's been pretty muggy, too, on top of this heat. Not a good combination. Uh, looks like we stay pretty muggy through Saturday. It's a little bit of a change. Uh, looks like humidity jumps up some on Saturday. Now, beyond that, we finally see dew points that fall off a little bit, and that helps. Uh, if it's going to be hot, we don't want it to be muggy, too, but uh, it will be fairly humid the next couple of days. Will that humidity turn into some rain? Boy, we hope so. Here's a look at the forecast for today. There is a chance by about 2 o'clock we'll start to see some of these clouds bubbling up into some showers and downpours. And then this probably continues into the late afternoon and evening hours. Our rain chances are at about 20%. Uh, but uh, if you do get underneath one of these downpours, you could see some brief heavy rain. Gusty winds also would be a possibility just with the way the atmosphere is set up today. By about 7 eight or 8 o'clock, these uh, showers and storms will start to die down, uh, although this still shows a little bit of activity by 10 o'clock. I think uh, with the last daytime meeting, uh, you will see this uh, a little quieter, uh, the radar a little quieter by that uh, time period. 7 o'clock this morning, 75. Noontime, we're at 89, and then we make it up to around uh, 96, as we said, there's that 20% chance of rain late in the day. Uh, rainfall potential through Monday, eh, for the most part, misses us. Uh, you got sort of a strip of rainfall here that we'll see out across parts of New Mexico and West Texas. Some good rains out west, east coast and Florida probably seeing a little bit of rain, but we miss out. What else is new? Uh, looks like our, rain, our forecast is pretty much rain free after today after today because again we do have that potential and you look at the departure from normal when we're talking about rainfall so this is basically how far below average we are for the year san antonio is closing in on 10 inches below average and that is on top of last year which was the driest year on record so this drought has uh, really taken a toll and it's not just us Dallas Fort Worth, uh, the entire state uh, is dealing with a, a drought at this point. Here's the extended forecast. We got mid 90s next couple days. The weekend will be fairly quiet, I think. A little bit more cloud cover on Saturday, perhaps. But other than that, we're still in the 90s. So through the foreseeable future, we're going to continue to add to that uh, that number of consecutive days above 90 degrees. All right, cloud cover on Saturday, and maybe uh, not too bad in the morning, at least the morning hours. Early morning? Yeah, I mean, I'd like to see some 60s on the map eventually. Right. October. That's our month. Yes, that's our month. That Thank is you. our month. 523, 78 degrees. Paw Patrol is on a roll. Up next, a first look at a third Paw Patrol movie that's already in the works. And Martin Scorsese talks about the Departed sequel. Sometimes it seems everything in movie theaters is a sequel or a franchise. CNN's David Daniel looks at a growing franchise and a film that could have had a sequel in today's Hollywood Minute. We're gonna need a new name for ourselves. How about the Paw Patrol? But more, with just a little bit extra. Even before the animated sequel, Paw Patrol, the mighty movie hits theaters, a third film in the preschool puppy franchise is in the works. Cal Brunker, director of 2021's Paw Patrol, the movie and the new sequel is set to bark out commands for number three, which is due in theaters in 2026. Paw Patrol, the mighty movie opens Friday. We got a cop in my crew. Soon a lady's gonna find out who I am and he's gonna kill me. I can get 
the rent. You just gotta let me do it my way. Speaking of franchises, Martin Scorsese says Warner Brothers executives wanted him to change the ending of The Departed to allow for a sequel. The revelation came in an interview with GQ magazine. Scorsese stood his ground, and the 2006 crime thriller won four Oscars, including Best Picture and Scorsese's first and so far only Best Director Oscar. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Pretty good movie. Yeah, it was. Big twists and turns. I know. All right, we don't want to give it away for anybody that hasn't seen it. 527, <laughs> 78 degrees. You should see it if you haven't. And as of 2 a.m. today, the writer's strike is officially over in Hollywood. But plot twist, there's still another step. Up next, why the Screen Actors Guild is still on the picket line. Plus, an increase in retail crime causing some Target stores to close forever. We'll tell you which ones. And are you ready to get sauced in a whole new way? Well, we're going to tell you about McDonald's two new sauce flavors and when you can try them. Add ahead on GMSA at 6, we're shining a spotlight on one local organization that's pairing service dogs with those who need them the most. It's over. This morning, a tentative deal is reached with the Hollywood Studios and the Writers Guild of America. I feel tentative. Yes. Up next, why the Screen Actors Guild is still on the picket line. And trending right now on KSET.com this morning, Canyon Lake is revealing some secrets due to record low lake levels. Divers have previously found proof that two towns are at the bottom of the lake. Online right now, you can find out more about the towns that disappeared from the map after Canyon Lake was created. Outside with live cam, lots of humidity to go around this morning. 78 degrees out at San Antonio International Airport. Still crossing our fingers for any chance of rain. Good morning. We've made it to midweek. It's Wednesday, the 27th Yay. of September. Yes. Made it to Wednesday. Made it to almost the end of September. <laughs> We're inching Thank closer. <laughs> Claw clawing yeah. our way to the finish line. Yes. And little by little. It's uh, This heat is no joke. It just continues to astound me how long we've... A uh, bit in this uh, in, in the 90s and triple digits, but as we said, October will be our month. I can feel yes. it. It's it's going to get better. Let's go outside for you right now, and we've got a few clouds out there. Uh, temperatures right now 78 degrees at the airport, but it feels like 80 because guess what? There is some humidity too. Uh, 73 in New Braunfels, 72 again. So some 60s are on the map in places like Bernie and Kerrville. In the pollen count, if you missed it yesterday, moles are still high. Uh, ragweed, fall them, and pigweed all there. Uh, some mold continues to be the main problem. Probably comes down a little bit today unless we get some rain. And there is a chance for that. A uh, small chance, but a chance nonetheless. I think we see a little more coverage than we did yesterday. Yesterday was really hit or miss. Today will be two, but I think we just see uh, maybe a few more showers and storms uh, than we did yesterday. And that time frame, as you plan out today, will be between 2 and 8 p.m. So as you pick up the kids from school or you're driving home from work, know there could be a few isolated storms. It's not likely, but there's a chance. 20%, in fact. And temperatures will make their way up to around 96 this afternoon. It'll probably feel more like 97 or 98 when you factor in the humidity. What does your drive to work and drive to school look like this morning? Let's check out with Steven now for the latest there. Better news, Justin. I just saw this from the Trains Guide cameras as we were opening up this uh, half hour of the newscast. You could see that things have cleared out along 35 southbound and folks have a uh, better news out there to report. But remember, this is a site of where we saw a crash that was reported earlier. Uh, thankfully, that has cleared out. So drivers aren't experiencing any problems out there. But at one point, one right lane was getting by and you could see that there was a little bit of a buildup that remains right behind me. So better news out there along I-35 southbound. But we're going to continue to watch the roadways closely. Now, the wide view of the map really just shows quiet roads out there for the majority of San Antonio commuters. And if you are heading into San Antonio, it's still pleasant from Pleasanton along 37 northbound with 28 minutes at this hour. 28 along US 90 eastbound uh, heading from Castorville and US 90 is one of those spots where we will start to see the buildups take place within the next hour. So just if you have to head out the door, probably now would be the best time to do it. 15 minutes if you are heading in from Lytle along I-35 northbound. So again, that crash is cleared out. We're going to continue to watch roads closely and I'll have more updates for you on other spots throughout the morning. But again, better news report out here along I-35 southbound. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. This morning, the Bear County Sheriff's Office and the Catholic Archdiocese both are sounding the alarm about a local priest accused of sexual assault. They are urging any other potential victims to come forward. This follows the arrest of that priest yesterday in connection with a case involving a church member. Our Katrina Weber is live on the west side of town on Marbach Road near South Ellison. And Katrina, we understand that church behind you is at the center of the case. 
That's right. This is St. Rose of Lima Church, the church where that priest was most recently assigned. This is also the church that the woman who made the outcry in this case attended. Now, Sheriff Javier Salazar had a news conference yesterday. He held a news conference to announce the arrest of the 42-year-old priest, Father George Mbugua Ndungu. The sheriff says that that priest is charged with aggravated sexual assault in a case involving a parishioner at St. Rose of Lima Church. Now, the alleged victim is an older woman who told investigators she had been sexually assaulted by him three different times since November of last year. The sheriff says the woman was vulnerable and turned to Ndugu for spiritual guidance, but he says the priest took advantage of her. The suspect, who more commonly is known as Father Wanjuri, had worked at eight different parishes in San Antonio and areas nearby since 2017. Salazar, Salazar says it's likely there are other victims, and he encourages them to come forward. We will dispatch a deputy out anywhere in the county or surrounding counties, for that matter, to take the information. Uh, again, if, if it's something that this sus suspect needs to be held accountable for criminally, we absolutely will be at the tip of the spear for that. Salazar says this case came to his attention last month when an employee of the church also made a complaint about this priest that then led to the other woman making this outcry. Uh, the archdiocese also released a statement saying that it takes all allegations like this seriously and also encouraging other victims to speak out. You can read that entire statement in the story on our website, ksat.com. Reporting live on the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you for that report. 536 lights, camera and action may soon return to Tinseltown. Leaders with the Writers Guild of America voted in favor of its members going back to work one minute after midnight or 2 a.m. San Antonio time. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, economists say the Hollywood strikes have already a $5 billion effect on the overall U.S. economy. It's almost time to start rolling the end credits for the long running soap opera in Hollywood almost time. I feel tentatively great. I mean, it's a tentative deal, so I'm feeling really good. After 148 days of striking on the streets, leaders of the Writers Guild of America unanimously voted in favor of their members getting back to work Wednesday. The tentative contract with the major studios includes pay hikes, stronger benefits, protections against the studio's use of artificial intelligence, and guarantees for streaming compensation. Even if this deal goes through, we still have to get the actors paid because our words are meaningless unless we have our talented friends out there putting them on the screen. But there still may be another chapter or plot twist in this drama. The WGA tentative agreement is, by definition, not yet set in stone, and the Screen Actors Guild is still on the picket line. It's hard to say, oh, the strike is over. Well, the strike isn't over because we still have days to wait to get it rectified and to get it voted on by the WGA members. And then there's the question of our strike. SAG-AFTRA leaders say they are, quote, committed to securing a fair contract. We live and work in a collaborative community and we have to, we'll have to give a little bit in these negotiations as well as receive. So, you know, as long as it's better than it has been. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Target is closing nine stores across four states, specifically because of theft and organized retail crime in those locations. Now, Target says it will soon close the stores in East Harlem, New York City, two locations in Seattle, Washington, and three locations in Portland, Oregon, and three locations in San Francisco and Oakland, California. The retailer says organized retail crime has become a threat to the safety of employees and shoppers. The stores will close on October 21st. Airbnb is trying to make one fantasy story very real for people just in time for Halloween this year. It's recreated Shrek's Swamp based on the 2001 animated movie. Ogre fans will find the place very earthy. Shrek's Swamp is located in the Scottish Highlands and features a mud-laden, moss-covered, murky-watered abode. Guests can light earwax candles, sit around a fire, and enjoy donkeys' freshly made waffles for breakfast. Interested guests can request a two-night stay starting October 13th. Up to three people will then get to visit the unique home October 27th through October 29th.
How neat. It's it look? just I like was, it. I was so busy. Yeah, reading. it looks a lot like it. I mean, like you're you're right in the cartoon. Yeah, I forgot about the earwax candles. <laughs> yes, I did too. That was cute though. 539, 76 degrees. China is taking over our classic board games now. Up next, how a new version of Pictionary is taking the challenge to a new level with the use of AI. If you need things to be a little more saucy in your life, McDonald's <laughs> has you covered. Up next, the two new sauces that will be soon available. And let's look out there with live cam. Okay, at this point, we all agreed. We're just waiting for October. Maybe things will change then. For now, we're at 76 degrees. We'll be right back. Welcome back, 543 in your morning consumer headlines. A new version of Pictionary is coming out, and this version has a high-tech twist. The maker of Pictionary, Mattel, says artificial intelligence will become a player in the game. Usually the game is played when someone draws a card and has to sketch the word on the card. The player's team guesses the word, they roll a die and move around the board. Well, in the new version, players still sketch words from a card, but it is AI that makes the guess. Players can earn points by guessing whether AI will figure out the answer. People can start pre-ordering the game today. The new game is expected to hit store shelves on Monday. New sauces are coming to McDonald's next month. The popular fast food chain says for a limited time, it's adding two more to its dipping sauce lineup. So the first new addition is sweet and spicy jam. McDonald's described it as a jammy red pepper sauce with a tongue numbing Szechuan peppercorn kick and extra heat from cayenne pepper. So it's the first ever breakfast inspired dipping sauce to be served at McDonald's in the US. The second is called Mambo Sauce and it's inspired by a tomato based sweet, spicy and vinegary sauce popular in Washington DC. So you could try the new sauces for yourself at McDonald's nationwide starting October 9th. I pay good money to go, to be in the car when Steph pulls up to the drive then they go, do you want sauce with that order? And she goes, yeah, I'll have the sweet and spicy jam. <laughs> or the mambo sauce. <laughs> Let's do it. I'll record it we'll share it with everyone. Oh my gosh, mornings are entertaining. 544, 76 degrees. <laughs> you might want this new friend to take home with you today. We're gonna visit with the Animal Defense League next. Well, if you listen closely, if you take your paw off of her microphone, we can hear you, your little motor going. <laughs> there we go. Oh, my goodness. Felicia's oh. here from the Animal Defense League. Who's this little baby? This is Lucia, and she is a two-month-old little kitty who is available for adoption. For uh, Her adoption fee is 125 Okay. And she is just gorgeous. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous color yeah. and kind of a medium to long-haired cat. Yes. So, mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. just soft as can be. And those beautiful little kind of of almost olive yeah kind of grayish olive colored eyes yeah she she's just to, gonna be just a little sweetie and got some is. too if you would like to take yes. two because again two is about the same as one exactly so. exactly and of course with kittens they're gonna climb everywhere yeah. <laughs> she is doing right you, now <laughs> okay Un unhook from the t-shirt back there so <laughs> there what y'all got going on well um, you know, it's a great example. So she and her siblings were actually in foster care for a little bit. Okay. So, um, you know, of course, our foster program helps save so many lives. And uh, we always are in need of new fosters or supplies also, because it can cost anywhere from 150 to $200 for that starter kit wow. for a foster pet. But the nice thing, if you are fostering, they give you everything you need. You can do it for as long as you want to. Exactly. And you, you can pick the age. If you want the little itty bitties that are going to be up in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. you know, like a new newborn and bottle feeding. Um, great way to kind of test out the kids to see if they can take yes. the responsibility of taking care of a exactly, pet Exactly, exactly. And it's just, it's so rewarding to have them in your home and to see, you know, their growth and how they're doing. So if you are available to foster, definitely let us know. There's an application to fill out. But if you can't foster, you can always donate and help, um, okay. you know, help us get supplies and make sure all of these babies have exactly what they need. And it takes so much work off of their hands and it's yeah. priceless help to them. So if you'd like more information about that, I want more information about this little baby right there, little kitty. Lucia. She's so <laughs> cute. Head on over to the Animal Defense League, 11300 Nacogdoches, or the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo. Go to adltexas.org.
All right, let's get another look around town. Thankfully, uh, things have cleared out along 35 southbound where we had that crash reported, but traffic's moving 37 at Carolina. You can see it right there behind me. We have a lot more traffic in the north and southbound lanes and 410 at Ray Ellison, some overnight construction that wrapped up, but you still see those barricades out there. So just be on the lookout as your morning drive does get moving here. Again, we did have that one crash over reported by the southwest side and that's already cleared out and you can see that we have plenty of green on the screen. But as always, there's that construction that's going to ramp up a little bit later today. So just be on the lookout here along State Highway 16, Bandera Road. We have curb and sidewalk construction. There's a lot of that going on these days, but this will end on Friday, September 29th, 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. We'll see alternating lane closures in both directions from Loop 1604 to Circle A. But other than that, it's been pretty quiet on the roads. Uh, that was the only incident we had at 35 at Somerset, and that has cleared out. And you can see 281 at the quarry. Things look mighty fine. Happy hump day, team. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's always nice. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember the last day you had to uh, wear a coat? Mm. Uh, Was it like April? April, I think. Probably Steph's April, like, that's yeah. called Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> oh, you mean <laughs> in, in, inside? Yeah. Yes. I mean outside. <laughs> oh, outside, no. Uh, yeah, but, but yeah, inside I all the time. I actually wore a sweater yesterday to the store. And it wasn't oh. because I just I didn't have anything else to wear. I was I had to do laundry. It was the only thing I had. <laughs> <laughs> I did laundry, by the way, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I did wear a sweater. Oh, uh, yeah. listen, we're hoping that we can uh, start wearing sweaters on a more frequent basis. Yeah. Uh, but I will tell you, it's not anytime soon. Uh, we still got seven <laughs> days of more heat. Uh, 78 degrees right now. We've got clear skies here in San Antonio. Dew point is at 70. Here's what I'm watching. And the reason I pull up water vapor is we can see that there's a little bit more moisture here out across West Texas. Water vapor is a great tool. We're seeing moisture in the atmosphere. can also kind of show us where we have our little disturbances. And I think that uh, with this rolling through this afternoon, moving west to east, that should give us some showers and storms. The question will be how widespread will they be? I, I think it'll still be isolated. Maybe a little bit more coverage than yesterday. Right now, we're not seeing much with this little piece of energy. Some showers out in New Mexico and Mexico, uh, but nothing here locally. As we get into the afternoon, once we get some daytime heating, you should start to see some of these clouds billow up into some downpours. This is 2 o'clock. It kind of uh, shows that, that things get started around that time frame. And then as we head into the afternoon, builds a little bit. We could see some brief heavy rain if you get underneath one of these downpours some lightning and thunder obviously maybe some gusty winds uh, but this looks a little more ominous than it is uh, you know it'll be hit or miss type stuff and uh, it's just a matter of where these pop up six o'clock still there but by seven eight o'clock a lot of this will start to die down other than maybe a few showers or downpours off to the east of San Antonio. So our rain chances today, I'd say between two and eight o'clock, that's when you can plan for a little bit of this activity to pop up, have the umbrella just in case, just in case. Uh, your evening commute could include a few of those downpours. As we look at the future cast here in the big picture, the jet stream still staying well to the north. And in fact, it buckles out west. We get an area of low pressure, but our uh, ridge that we've been dealing with for so long actually builds back in and we kind of get stuck in this pattern for a little bit. So that means quiet weather going into the weekend. Very quickly out in the tropics, we've still got Philippe here, tropical storm Philippe, and then another wave, which probably becomes Rena. They're really close together though, and that usually doesn't bode well uh, for these storms. Uh, the latest track takes this off to the north. And then Philippe probably works west and weekend. So I don't think there's a lot to worry about here. We'll watch it. Other than that, there's uh, not much in the tropics that uh, needs watching right now. So our 20% chance of rain today, 95 Thursday, 95 Friday, 94 Saturday, 94 Sunday. Pretty consistent here. Maybe a little more cloud cover over the weekend. And even into next week, we're still in the 90s, both Monday and Tuesday. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we're following the new legal setback for Donald Trump after a New York judge ruled that the former president committed years of financial fraud. We'll have the reaction and an ABC News exclusive with the mother and the fiance of the Los Angeles Sheriff's deputy who was killed in an ambush. We'll have that and so much more right here on GMA. Ahead in the next hour of GMSA, investigators looking into whether there are more victims in the case against the local Roman Catholic priest after his arrest. Plus, as the city of San Antonio keeps growing, so does the problem of illegal dumping. We go to a neighborhood with illegal trash problems and find out what officials are doing to get that mess cleaned up. And next, custom art on wheels. KSAT takes a ride with lowrider owners whose cars are now on display at San Antonio International Airports.
and checking Transguide right now. We've had a few problems this morning. But traffic is slowly starting to build as folks hit the road for this Wednesday morning. Looking live at 281 at the quarry and Interstate 37 at Carolina with the Alamo Dome in the distance. We'll be back. This morning on GMSA, Hollywood is rolling the end credits for their writer's strike. That shut down production on your favorite shows. Why writers can head back to work as they wake up this morning. Back here at home, San Antonio police are hoping you can help them track down the suspects in two separate murders. What you need to know about each case. And let's look out there with live cam this morning, starting in the 70s, so we can handle that. But yes, uh, expecting things to heat up once again. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It's six o'clock on your Wednesday, September 27th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a good week so far. And, uh, you know, we hope you're powering through the heat in the afternoon. I mean, hopefully that'll, I was going to say wrap up soon, but uh, I, don't, I don't know, at least wind down a little bit. We're expert level now at dealing with the heat, especially in the afternoons. Justin is in for Mike and uh, yeah. happy Wednesday to you, sir. Thanks, sir. Uh, I feel like Mother Nature may be on strike. She's ah. just not budging at all. <laughs> nice way to put it. Yeah, it sure feels that way. Yesterday, there were a few showers out there. I want to show you this great picture. This is out of Divine. You can see a little bit of rain coming down there. Uh, there were some showers, especially south of San Antonio yesterday afternoon. Nice sight to see. We just didn't see a lot here in San Antonio. Most everything we saw yesterday was kind of few and far between. We have another chance today, but it's going to be like winning the rain lottery because uh, it will be only a select few that get the rain. Weather headlines. We're going to look at the time lapse here. This was yesterday evening. It was a nice sunset. And then as we went into uh, the overnight hours and then this morning, we're left with just a few clouds. So yes, yeah, some pop up isolated downpours today. 111 days. That is how many consecutive days we've been at 90 or above. Incredible. Weekend. We're going to look at that forecast. Rain looks unlikely at this point. Uh, and we'll see still some hot temperatures by Saturday and Sunday. Right now we're at 77 degrees, two point is at 70. It's a warm morning. And the forecast for today takes us up to 83 at 10 o'clock by noontime, 89. This afternoon, if, you, if you, uh, you plan to be out running errands or maybe the evening commute uh, is in your plans, know that there is a 20% chance of some downpours out there. Uh, and that lasts till about 8 p.m. this evening. No rain out there right now. Roads are dry, but we still have some issues. Let's check in with Stephen for the latest on your morning commute. Yeah, uh, you right now I think the main issue is going to be that congestion that will start building. Justin, as we get a look around town, you're not seeing a lot of it from this shot at Transguide, but we did have that crash at 35 at Somerset that we were watching very closely for about an hour. Obviously, that's cleared out, and drivers can expect can expect some quiet roadways, but getting a pretty busy start there. 35 at San Marcos, both the north and southbound lanes usually build up with traffic around this time. But we're going to keep an eye on things as the morning commute does get moving. Behind me, we did have some stalled vehicles also reported by 35 uh, right around that same spot where we had those crashes. We'll take a closer look at that and find out how that could impact your drive time. But we want to take a look at those inbound times now, especially if your destination is the Alamo City. The journey from Bernie along to I-10 eastbound should be about 22 minutes. That's not bad. And right now, 25 along 281 southbound if you're heading in from Bull Verde, so no need to hurry. And 24 minutes. That's not awful coming in from New Braunfels along 35 southbound. So again, enjoy the roads while you can, because this is the hour where things really start to shape up on our roadways. More people are waking up and hitting the road, so just be careful out there. We'll have more updates for you throughout the morning. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, the Archdiocese of San Antonio is responding following a case of aggravated sexual assault against a local Roman Catholic priest. A statement from the Archdiocese saying, in part, they take seriously any allegation of sexual misconduct and the safety and well-being of all people are very important. Now investigators are looking into whether there are more victims. Case had spoke with parishioners at his most recent church, St. Rosa Lima. We're going to have a full breakdown and a new statement from the Archdiocese coming up at 630. This morning, San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers are hoping you can help them track down the suspects in two separate murder cases. Let's start with the murder of 30-year-old Alexis Trevino earlier this month over on the west side. SAPD responded to reports of a major crash at Panuco and Buena Vista Roads. Here's a video of the scene where it happened. Officers found Trevino inside a vehicle shot in the head. The only evidence investigators found were bullet holes through the back window and the headrest. And another Crime Stoppers case, the victim also found shot in a vehicle. Police are looking for the person who murdered a man on the city's west side. So this is a victim, 28-year-old Juan Mendoza. 
He was killed in March of last year. Now, police say he was in the driver's seat of a vehicle, stopped at a red light on South General McMullen when someone in a black Chevy Malibu pulled up to his vehicle and shot him in the head. He died that next day. You are asked to call Crime Stoppers if you have any information about either case. That number is 210-224-STOP. New details from the border as El Paso city officials are describing their shelters following the surge of migrants crossing into the U.S. illegally. They don't necessarily have funds to be able to continue their travels within the United States. That's also leading to that breaking point because we're seeing longer stays within the shelter system as a direct result. The mayor of El Paso says the city has found accommodations for 7,000 migrants in just the last 10 days. And last night, the city council voted to buy a former school to serve as an additional migrant shelter. Back here in San Antonio, the city continues to shelter migrants as well. The online dashboard shows more than 1,000 migrants have been sheltered daily since Friday. And topping your morning headlines, it's almost time for lights, camera action in Hollywood. Leaders with the Writers Guild of America voted in favor of its members going back to work starting at 2.01 a.m. this morning, San Antonio time. This is after 148 days of striking on the streets. Tentative contract with the major studios includes pay hikes, stronger benefits, protections against the studio's use of artificial intelligence, and guarantees for streaming compensation. Now to the case against Amazon. Is the trillion dollar online shopping behemoth a monopoly? Well, the government says yes. And now as ABC's Andrew Dimbert reports, Amazon is fighting back. This morning, a groundbreaking lawsuit. The Federal Trade Commission and 17 states are suing Amazon, claiming the online retail giant has created a monopoly. They're claiming that Amazon punishes vendors if they offer their products for a lower price on a competing website. They also are forcing or allegedly forcing these vendors to use their logistics, their warehousing, their shipping. The suit claims Amazon deters rivals and punishes sellers from lowering prices on other sites by making them invisible in search results. The $1.3 trillion company is accused of prioritizing search results for its own products and coercing sellers to use Amazon's fulfillment service. Service. Nicholas Parks is the president of snobfoods.com and has been selling on Amazon for 21 years. We have to more than double our prices um, in order to compensate for all the fees, in order to break even, basically. It's created a, a very difficult retail market for anybody in the retail business. Amazon firing back, defending its practices and saying if the FTC gets its way, the result would be fewer products to choose from, higher prices, slower deliveries for consumers and reduced options for small businesses. The lawsuit filed by the FTC is wrong on the facts and the law. The suit had long been expected, with the head of the FTC vowing to rein in tech companies, but the legal strategy is far from a sure bet. Linda Kahn, who's bringing this suit, has a long time history of being a critic uh, of Amazon. Her anti-competitive views don't always sit well with the courts. A couple of cases she brought, namely against Microsoft and Facebook's parent company, Meta, uh, were thrown out. Don't look for any quick resolution to this lawsuit. The case could drag on in court for years. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. And the time now, 6.08 and 76 degrees for now. After the break, Custom Art on Wheels, a KSAT crew takes a ride with lowrider owners whose cars are now on display at San Antonio International Airport. And you're right around town in the afternoon, maybe a little warm with that sunshine. But for now, we're at 76 degrees and a little humid out there. We'll be right back.